church. Who's ready to worship this morning? Stand with us as we get this worship service started. Amen, man. Well, hey, it's great to be with you guys today here at Church. For those watching online, we're so glad you could join us as well. Well, hey, man, we got three things real quick before we jump into the rest of worship. Um, and the first thing that we'd like to do is just, first of all, just welcome all of our first-time guests. If you're here this morning, man, we just want to say you're, we're so glad you're here. And let me tell you. Let me t yeah. And let me tell you. Here at Family Life Church, man, we have a slogan that we are for Ocala. And so what we believe is that we serve a God who loves you more than anything in this world. And we get to come and worship him. 
and then we get to go and spread his love in our community. So we want to say we are so glad you're here with us. And if this is your first time worshiping with us, in the back of every chair, we have this thing called a connect card. It looks just like this right here on the screen. And what we'd love for you to do is if you could fill out that front side of that card and hand it to our next steps table after service, and we're going to give you a gift before you leave. Amen? And secondly, we want to let you know about, and this is for everyone, we want to let you know about something called Connect Point. Connect Point is how you join the team. So we believe that God doesn't want us up in the bleachers watching from distance, but we believe that God's heart for us is to be on the field, involved in ministry. And so if you know that this is the church that you want to be a part of, then we want to invite you to join the ministries and get on the team by serving. We'd like to say around here that those who serve get the best seat in the house. And so tonight we have our connect point from four to six. We're going to feed you some pizza, hallelujah. And we're going to tell you more about who we are as a church and how you can get plugged in with serving here in the ministries. And so you can sign up at our next steps table before you leave today and let us know you're coming this afternoon. We do it every single month. And then last but not least, we want to thank you for your faithfulness and giving. It's because of your faithfulness and giving that allows for this church to be here and for its ministries to grow. Just in the last few weeks, we've been able to see God move in people's lives like never before. We've been able to see people get baptized, people make decisions to follow Christ, people who are becoming free from bondages. And that's because of what God is doing. And when we give, it allows for the ministry to expand, to grow. So we want to invite you, if you haven't done so yet, check out OcalaFLC.com for online giving. And those watching online, there's a link in the description. And for everyone else, if you've got cash or checks, you can leave it in the drop box right outside these double doors to the left. He can drop that in there. But we like to say around here that because God gave all, we can be boldly generous. Who's ready to continue worshiping today? Come on, let's give it to God. Let's do it.
else who created us. Let's sing about that this morning. If he dresses a lily with beauty and splendor, how much more will he clothe you? How much more will he clothe you? looked at the stars in the sky that he created and he looked at all the beautiful birds and the animals across the land and he thought about us and then he formed us in our mother's womb God of creation there at the start before the beginning of No point of reference up to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. And as we speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born in the vapor of your breath of flame. The stars are made to worship so alive. I can see your heart in everything you made. Every burning star, a signal fire of grace. Creation sings your praises so
this morning. So you guys can have a seat. So today, we got a little treat for you. So two weeks ago, our youth group had the opportunity to go to a youth conference down near Tampa. And so they were able to gather with thousands of other teenagers to learn about God. And I've asked if a couple of our students who were able to go on this 12th conference would be able to share what God did through this conference in their lives. If you guys could welcome some of our teenagers up on stage. Hello, my name is Christian Walters. Um, the days before the 12th conference, I was stressed out of the mind. Um, family problems, just life. Um, when I went to the first day of 12 conference, it was okay, nice, didn't get much sleep. The second day, it was the same thing. And the third day, it was really awesome. There was preachers, very good preachers. There was nice singers, very well, good songs. But the thing that, it got my heart. It, the singers, they were awesome. I normally don't raise my hands while praying or praising the Lord while singing, but that day I was. And and the Holy Spirit got me that day. I was after we left, I was no longer stressed, no worries, anything. That's it. Um, before the 12 conference, um, I didn't have a good relationship with God. I just, um, like, in, during worship, I would just, like, you know, just stay quiet and stand up and that's it. But, like, after the 12 conference and after me hearing all the preachings and everything, I raise up my hands, like, I, I I'm to be myself in the 12 conference and it helped me learn that I can be myself and it helped me want to talk to God more and read more about him and understand and listen to more positive music. And it just really helped me a lot. Well, Jason, let me tell you, man. God's doing something in the teenagers here at Benny Life Church. And let me tell you this also. The 12th conference, we were able to send about 20 students. But we would not have been able to do it if it wasn't for the generosity of the people in this church who stepped up and said, we're going to make sure that these students have an opportunity to go to a conference that's going to teach them about God and that's going to help them to grow in their relationship and to confirm their faith in their own lives. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for helping 
from the students get to this conference. And also, thank you to some adults like Leanna and Brenda and Anna. And we had about five or six adults that went as chaperones. But let me tell you, when you're with kids for four days like that, you don't get a lot of sleep. And so thank you also for all those who helped stepped up to make this trip happen. We, we want to, I have a quick recap video that we want to show you of the 12 conference. Enjoy. I don't care what they said, cuz I'll never be ashamed of his love that saved me 180. The top that's never paid. It's Friday, will it be? And if you will, we know the Jesus. Amen. Good to see everybody here this morning. Uh, we'd like to start with a little graphic. If you could throw that up on the screen for me, please. Let me tell you a little story. There was a gentleman that um, he was going to build him a, a, a relatively small house. And uh, he was good with a hammer and saw, got some engineering plans. And um, if you look at the, the top, you'll see the boards going up like this. Those are called rafters. And uh, as he studied the engineering plans, it called for, I think it was uh, two by eights. And he said, you know what? Two by sixes are a lot cheaper. So I'm going to put two by sixes on there. That'll save me some money. And then in the bottom there, going across the bottom of the floor, you see what's called joist. He called it two by eights. He said, you know, I think two by sixes will work just fine. And I saved myself some money. So uh, he looked at some other things. And in places where it called for four nails, he said, I think three will hold. I think five. So when he got finished, it looked just perfect. And he had saved him a little bit of money as well. And he kind of patted himself on the back and says, I'm a pretty smart person. Some several years later, you see that roof is nice, got good shape to it. He started doing this. Sloping down. Eventually it sloped so much that you could actually lay a human being, a grown man, between the pinnacle and the E, and he would just, he could hide it. You couldn't see him. It sloped that much. I, I want to share something with you. Thinking that we can live for God and take shortcuts at the same time will bring you regrets. There's some people that have looked at the shortcuts they've made, serving God, but compromising a little bit here, compromising a little bit there. Some of these shortcuts brought not just some regrets, but some severe regrets. You see where I'm going with this? Before we get any further in our message, I'd like to invite you to read our faith statement with me. God's grace empowers me to live for Jesus. His word is at work in my heart to bring me into his fullness. I am fully committed to his plan for my life, and I submit to his leadership and authority over me. Jesus is my Lord. The Holy Spirit goes before me and leads my steps. I do not belong to myself. I belong to the King of kings and Lord of lords. By his hand of mercy, I now stand and walk in his light. I'm cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ and am a child of the living God. Can we give the Lord some praise this morning? Amen. My name is Charles Hill, and I'm the 
founding pastor of Family Life Church, and we're currently in a series that we're calling Fixer Upper. Okay? Fixer Upper. And uh, we talked to you about that house and that, that gentleman that as he was building it, he took some shortcuts. And when you take shortcuts, you've got to be careful because what you'll do is get something you didn't intend to get. In this series, we're talking about what makes for meaningful family experiences. All right, let me ask you a question. Do you know anybody that's a worry wart? Okay, anybody here might say, that'd be me. <laughs> Worrying. We're, we're, we're going to be talking about this morning. Um, I, I want us to look at some things that the Lord addressed in this theme. So if you have your Bible and like to turn to Luke chapter 12, looking at verse 22, uh, I want to read this passage. If you'd like to follow along, Jesus 12, 22. Jesus said to his followers, So I tell you, don't worry about the food you need to live or about the clothes you need for your body. Life is more than food. And the body is more than clothes. Verse 24, he says, look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest. They don't have storerooms or barns, but God feeds them. Now look at this next statement. I don't want to rile up the PETA people too much. P-E-T-A. He says, you are worth much more than birds. Verse 25. You cannot add any time to your life by worrying about it. If you cannot do even the little things, then why worry about the big things? Verse 27, consider how the lilies grow. They don't work or make clothes for themselves, but I tell you that even Solomon with his riches was not dressed as beautifully as one of these flowers. God clothes the grass in the field, which is alive today, but tomorrow is thrown into the fire. So how much more will God clothe you? Don't look, look at this. It, by the way, at the end of this sentence, you see the ball in the bat? Now, language arts teachers tell us that's called an exclamation point. I remember calling it a ball in a bat. <laughs> Don't have so little faith. Don't always think about what you will eat or what you will drink. And don't keep worrying. All the people in the world, some translations say even pagans, are trying to get these things. And your father knows you need them. But seek God's kingdom and all your other needs will be met as well. How many of you have ever watched that classic movie called The Lion King? Got some folks that you're familiar with that? I, there's a song in that movie. Uh, you may have never heard of it. It's called Hakuna Matata. To, to, totally foreign. You never heard of it, right? Okay, the words go like this. Hakuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase. <laughs> Hakuna Matata, ain't no passing craze. It means no worries for the rest of your days. It's our problem-free philosophy. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> Got to be careful singing that too much or you two will jerk us down. <laughs> so <laughs> got to be careful. And uh, how many of you enjoy a little bit of reggae? Anybody in you know, the island folks or the island music? Yeah, yeah. All right, you might recognize the name Bobby McFerrin. He wrote a little song called Don't Worry. It goes like this. Here's the little song I wrote. You might want to sing it note for note. Don't worry. Be happy. In every life, we have some trouble. But when you worry, you make it double. Don't worry. Be happy. Don't worry. Be happy now. Ain't got no place to lay your head. 
Somebody came and took your bed. Don't worry. Be happy. The landlord say your rent is late. He may have to litigate. Don't worry. Be happy. Come on. <laughs> A little bit of... Some of you are all <laughs> on that major with both feet. <laughs> all of us worry some of the time. Some of us worry all of the time. Jesus said, don't worry any of the time. In your notes, why do we worry? Jesus said very simply, do not worry. To worry is to disobey the Lord. All right? Lack of trust in God feeds the sin of worry. Now listen to this. Most worry is a control issue which begs the question, who is in control of your life? Okay? Now listen to this. Your kids, they know when you're not trusting the Lord. Your mouth gives you away. Let that sink in. Oh yeah, your mouth gives you away. In the Greek, as Luke was writing this, verse 22, there's a Greek word there that, uh, the Greek word is merimnado, merimnado. It's translated in verse 22, worry. In verse 25, it's translated worrying. Verse 26 is translated anxious. Now, let me tell you what the word means. It means to be distracted or divided okay the internal divide becomes a tremendous distraction heavenly peace in our hearts is canceled out when we allow this world to distract us we worry because we want to be in control peace comes into our hearts when we surrender control to the Holy Spirit. Thank you. There's actually very little that we have any real control over. In your notes, what do we typically worry about? You see, in Jesus' day, Food and clothing, it was an issue. You know, the food for the, for the next day even. And then clothes, a lot of times people had what was on their back. And that was it. Jesus said in verse 22, he said, So I tell you, don't worry about the food you need to live or about the clothes you need for your body. Life is more than food and the body is more than clothes. Verse 24, look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest. They don't have storerooms or barns, but God feeds them. And you are worth much more than birds. How many of you have seen any neurotic birds worrying about the next meal? God loves you more than the birds. That's what he said here. Verse 27, consider. Let me give some thought to this. Consider how the lilies grow. They don't work or make clothes for themselves. But I tell you that even Solomon with his riches was not dressed as beautifully as one of these flowers. God clothes the grass in the field, which is alive today, but tomorrow is thrown into the fire. So how much more will God clothe you? Again, remember, see the ball in the bat? You don't have so little faith. Don't have so little faith. Today, and I think you uh, probably relate to this, uh, wh what happens is that we look into a, a loaded pantry and say, what am I going to eat today? Okay, we look into a closet with a dozen shirts or more. What am I going to wear? 
See, things are a little bit different for us. L now listen to this. Typically in America, food and clothes is not that much of an issue. I can remember growing up, we would get what's called commodities. Anybody heard of commodities? They had these big bulk food the government would hand out. I remember they had a big can of cheese. We were all over that. Um, the poorest American, very typically, is fabulously better off than people living in a third world country. That's why so many people want to come to this country. All right, what are the top common things Americans worry about? Um, what we typically worry about, number one, is the future. You know, what's around the corner? We don't know. My wife and I, a little while back, we, we bought this little small RV. And this past Monday, we struck out to St. George Island State Park. We went camping. Seniors get to go half price. <laughs> Anybody ever heard of BOGO before? I'm all in. So here we are on the road, and uh, guys, you know what it is. Your, your ears, you're listening for the road noises. You want to hear that engine? <laughs> just, just steady engine. The road noise, everything you want steady. And then after we've been on the road for a while, I started hearing something sound like a flute. I asked my wife, I said, you hear that? Hear what? It's, it's a different kind of noise. I don't hear anything. I hear something. Sound like a flute. Got to Caravel up on the Big Bend. Pulled over to this little parking lot. And I told her, I'm going to go walk around the rig and see if something's unusual. So I start walking around it. Couldn't believe what I found. There was a rim that did not have a tire on. I'm serious. You've heard of these little skirts they put over the tire? Skirt's gone. Tire's gone. It's, I'm riding on the rim. <laughs> Sounded like a flute. So if you hear a flute going down the road, stop. <laughs> so we uh, got the, the spare put on the ground and uh, <laughs> finished our trip to the state park all week the thought kept hitting me and my, my wife even came to me and said you think that spare's going to hold up we have a trip home coming up Friday are we going to be able to get home okay we don't know what's around the corner we worry about the future riding back I'm listening for that flute If I hear a flute, we're in trouble because I ain't got a spare. <laughs> Another thing we're worried about is the past. So how can, why would people worry about the past? Because they've done things in the past that affects the future. You understand how that works, right? So they worry about the past. Is my past going to come surging forward to haunt me? We worry about money. We worry about health. When our kids were small, if they hiccup the wrong way, sweetie, I'm going to take this one to the doctor. She said, well, that, that, that's just noises kids make. I don't, don't, I don't recall hearing that. I'll, 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 let's take it to the doctor. Just settle down. Kids make noises like it's nothing. You make that noise again, you're going to the doctor. <laughs> Our health, we're concerned about that. How about job security? Is it going to be there tomorrow? Is it going to be there next month? Is it going to be there for me? Relationships. Relationships can be something we'll worry about. We worry about what others think. Worrying affects our appetite. Some people, and I've known people like this, that they get so stressed out filled with worry that if they eat 
reverse course. Is that a polite way of saying it? <laughs> and they would lose lunch or supper or water because they're so stressed out. That's the way some people respond. <laughs> I heard about one guy that he was so nervous, took a girl out on a date. <laughs> yeah, reverse course. <laughs> he was so nervous about being with that girl. So you got some that can't keep it down because they get so stressed out. Then they have the other kind that's like me. You ever heard of comfort food? <laughs> it's amazing what a Twinkie can do to settle you down. <laughs> Chocolate chip cu cookies are so soothing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Frappe. Comfort foods. Now, listen to this. Stressed. Stressed, spelled backwards, is desserts. <laughs> now, some of you in your mind, you're kind of, <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Dr. Charles Mayo, he's one of the founders of the Mayo Clinic. This is what he said. He said, worry affects the circulation, the heart, the glands, the whole nervous system. Corey Ten Boom, she was a lady that was a victim of the Holocaust. Lost her parents, lost her dear sister that she loved so much. Spent time in concentration camp. Saw horrors. This is what she said. Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. Let that settle in. In your notes, how can we fight against the sin of worry? The first thing we can do is we have to take captive every thought. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 says, We do live in the world, but we do not fight in the same way the world fights. Now, I want you to notice the contrast here between the world and and then what Paul says is us. Because the Bible makes a pretty clear, not a very clear delineation. You've got the people on one side that love God, that love the Creator. This group of people, we call them people of faith, Jesus followers. But then you've got this other group over here that says that they love the world more than whatever the Creator has for them. They've chosen the world instead of choosing God. Now, keep that thought in mind. Let's go back to verse 3. We do live in the world, but we do not fight in the same way the world fights. Verse 4, we fight with weapons that are different from those the world uses. Our weapons have power from God that can destroy the enemy's strong places. We destroy people's arguments in every, look at this, proud thing. Proud thing that raises itself against the knowledge of God. We capture every thought and make it give up and obey Christ. You see, worry is a battle, and the battlefield is the mind. It's in our thought life. Anxious thoughts will invade our mind. Remember Luke 12, 30 says all the people in the world are trying to get these things. He said, and your father knows you need them. Some versions say the pagans seek after these things. People outside the community of faith are consumed with these worldly things. People of faith have the Holy Spirit to help them not be consumed by worrisome thoughts. Worrisome thoughts don't have to characterize your home. Remember, we're talking about fixer-upper, getting our homes the way it should be. Worrisome thoughts don't have to characterize your home. Dark, worrisome thoughts will take you to a very dark place every time if we don't take them captive. Worrisome thoughts will fill your mouth with doubt and unbelief. 
undealt with, these thoughts will fill the hearts of your children. Are you listening to me? We're talking about getting our homes together. Undealt with bitterness will fill the hearts of your children. If you don't want that in your children's hearts, deal with it in yourself. Get rid of that bitterness. Give it to God and move past it. Thoughts will fill your mind with rejection and self-hate. That self-hate has a way of being passed to your children. Take these thoughts captive and take them out of your mind. Replace them with what God says about us. Something we need to recognize is 98% of all that you worry about will never happen. He left St. George Island. Sweetie, you hear that flute? No, that, that's just in my mind. Are we going to make it home? Didn't have a spare. What happens if something goes down? See, these thoughts, 98% of all that we worry about will never happen. The 2% does happen. God will give you grace to overcome them. Don't allow Satan to steal from your family what God is trying to give you. Luke 12, 25 you cannot add any time to your life by worrying about it. Next item here in your notes, learn or lean into your heavenly father. A friend of mine, a dear friend of mine, has known the Lord for decades. His daddy was a pastor, but he hit a situation in his life that was, um, he never thought he'd be facing what he was having to face. Uh, you ever been blind, blindsided? You understand how that works? Something you never saw coming. It was a, a major, major tragedy. And it put him on his face before God. And he said that on his face before God, now he had known Jesus as his Savior. But you know who he said he discovered? He discovered God as his, as his Father. He heard the voice of the Heavenly Father call him son. You're my son. And I've got my hand on you. You're going to be fine. When you listen to the Heavenly Father, what's going to happen to these worrisome thoughts? Lean into your Heavenly Father. Luke 12, 30, your Father knows you need them. The term Father. God is our Heavenly Father, and He's going to take care of us. Your earthly Father, He may have reneged on His role as a provider, but your Heavenly Father will take care of you. The next item there in your notes pray it through until you get God's peace. There's something about getting before the Lord. Philippians. 4, 6 says, do not worry about, look at that next word. That, 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 that's a very comprehensive word. What does it leave out? Nothing. Do not worry about anything, but pray and ask God for everything you need. There's some of you here need to hear that this morning. There's some of you here have some needs and you're worried about it. It bothers you when you're laying on your bed at night. It bothers you. What are you supposed to do? Tell God what you need. Ask God for everything you need. Now look at this next little three-word thing. It says, always, there's that big comprehensive word again, always giving thanks. Well, when I'm going through this horrific situation, how am I supposed to give thanks? You give thanks because you know that your Heavenly Father is looking over you. You give thanks because you know that His love is enduring. And you can trust the Lord. Verse 7, and God's peace, which is so great, we cannot understand it. 
You know, there's a lot about God I don't understand. I'm really serious about it. There's a lot about God I don't understand. As a teenage boy, I stuttered real bad. I just did. The teacher called on me, and I had to talk before the class. It was embarrassing. If a girl came up, it was worse. <laughs> Why does the Heavenly Father love me? This little insecure, studying boy. But you know what? The Heavenly Father put his arms around me and said, I love you and I created you. And I'm I don't understand that. And Paul says very plainly here, God's peace, which is so great, we cannot understand it. Peace in the storm. Peace in the middle of the conflict. He says that this peace will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. He says, pray with thanksgiving. You see, when, he, when we fill our mouths with thanksgiving, we're expressing our confidence that the God of heaven is my God. Thanksgiving releases the flow of faith to our kids. Parents, listen to that. Thanksgiving just releases the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit down to our kids. It will fill our mouths and our thoughts with thanksgiving. Scripture says in God's peace, which is so great we cannot understand it, will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The testimony of peace in the midst of turmoil speaks to those around us like nothing else. Your family needs that peace. You guard the hearts and minds of your children when you show them how to walk in peace. Holy Ghost anointed peace. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Give all your worries to him because he cares about you. And you may be thinking, well, how, how do you get, give the worries? How do you give it away like that? You get on your face before the Lord. Give all your worries. God, there's some things that's ripping my heart out of me. There's things that's just disturbing me. What do you do? God, I give it to you. Give all your worries to him because he cares about you. Let me ask you a question. What's going to be the theme of your family? What's going to be the theme of your family? Is you going to have a family filled with anxiety and worry? Or are you going to have a family that's filled with giving it to God? My kids were small. I think most of you know that I retired as a middle school teacher. And um, some of you say, well, how did you not go, go crazy? I never said I didn't go crazy. <laughs> Teaching middle schoolers. Middle schoolers are characterized as being hormones with arms and legs. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But my, my kids, every night we would pray before we go to bed. We'd gather around the bed and pray. One night I came in from school, and I'd had one of those days. <laughs> you you kind of see the picture a little bit. It was one of those days, and I was tired. I was whipped. Didn't have any strength to go. I told my kids, I said, guys, Daddy is tired. Daddy needs to go to bed. We'll resume prayer tomorrow night. But I really got to go to bed. You kids go on to bed. And we'll, we'll pray tomorrow night. With that, they went to bed. I went to bed. 30 minutes to an hour later, I felt some little hands on my shoulder rocking me. Daddy, you awake? Daddy, you awake? Yeah, Daddy's awake. It was my second boy maybe seven years old he said daddy we need to pray 
what are you going to do when your little seven-year-old wakes you up and says, we need to pray? I rolled out of bed gladly. Why? Because that's more precious than gold. One of the themes of our family is that we're a praying family. We pray together. We pray before we hit the road. We pray just, we're a praying family. That's one of the themes of our family. What is going to light the fire in your family? Is it going to be the fire of faith or the cold water of doubt? Luke 12, 31 says, Seek first God's kingdom and all your other needs will be met as well. We started out with that graphic. We told you about the guy that took the shortcuts. Don't take shortcuts. Don't take shortcuts. Don't take the risk of facing tomorrows that you are responsible because you took all these shortcuts. Don't take shortcuts. Put God's call on your family as your priority. I'd like to ask everybody to close your eyes, if you will, please. The Holy Spirit is speaking to folks this morning. I want you to listen to what God is saying. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is witnessing to your heart. There's some of you that need to alter the course of your family. Listen to what God is saying. And right now, purpose in your heart. God, we're going we're gonna to do what you're witnessing in my heart. We need to start doing. Or maybe you need to stop doing some things. Listen to the Holy Spirit. You may be here this morning and say, Pastor Charles, truth be known, I've never really surrendered my life to God, but I know I need to, and that's what I want to do. Well, let me assure you, Scripture teaches that God listens to a sincere heart, and He'll listen to you right where you're at. All you've got to do is say, Jesus Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me, Lord. I ask you to come into my heart. I want you to make me new. God, I just surrender myself to your control. And God, I want to serve and honor you the rest of my life. Just come in, Lord, and, and be my God. And Lord, I'll serve you the rest of my days. Right where you're at. You pray that prayer. Scripture says that you'll become a new creation. You'll become born again by the Spirit of God. Father, thank you for your word. Father, thank you for your spirit that's here in our midst. And oh God, we do want to glorify you. Help every one of us this week, oh God, to just seek your face with renewed vigor. To seek your word, oh God, with all of our being. That our life would redound to your glory. That we might honor you with our very being. First in the mighty and the wonderful name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. Pastor David. Come on, let's give it up for Pastor Charles this morning. Thank you. Amen. Cool deal, cool deal. Check this out, man. If you made that decision to follow Jesus today, in the back of your chair, we have something called an I Have Decided card. And we'd love it if you could fill this out and hand it to myself, Pastor Charles, so you can give it and put it in the drop box or to our next steps table. We just want to connect with you and celebrate with you how God is changing your life. Amen. And for those watching online, there's a digital connect card. You can also let us know about your decision to follow Jesus. If our prayer team could go ahead and come to the front, and if our tone setters could go ahead and get back in position. We have just two more things real quick before we dismiss. The first thing um, is we're in a series called Fixer Upper. And how many people know that, okay, we're talking about fixing up our families, but how many people know that sometimes we got a little bit of a Fixer Upper project at home as well? But what we're going to be doing with this series is we're going to be giving away a $100 Home Depot gift card just to help you get started on that project at home. And this is how you can enter into this drawing. 
So over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about some habits that you can implement at home to really start working on that fixer upper in your home life. Um, but what we'd love to, you to do is if you were to, if you could post a picture on Instagram of you and your family implementing some of the habits we're going to be talking about over the next few weeks, um, you can tag the church at Ocala FLC on Instagram, or if you're on Facebook, you have to check in at the church. And this is just so we can keep track of, of, of people in, um, people doing this, all right? And when you do this, you can do it up to four times. And on the last Sunday of our series on September 4th, we're going to be having a drawing and we're going to give away a $100 gift card to Home Depot. Sound good? And all your notes has all the details on there in case you need a refresher, all right? Then last but not least, we want to let you know about the after party we have. We have a free snack in the cafe. You can take that, hang out, get to meet some people before you leave today. Let the kids play on the playground, have a good time. Amen. And our prayer team is here at the front. If there's anything you're going through in life that you just need to know that there's someone agreeing with you in prayer, we want to invite you as soon as we dismiss, come up here. And these ladies are going to believe in faith with you. Amen. All right, if everyone could stand. So thank you guys for being here today. Next week, we got another great service for you. And with that being said, you are now dismissed.